Hey, what is up? Welcome back to the Gridiron Coffee Company podcast, Stories from the Gridiron. If this is your first episode, my mission with this podcast is to bring the inspirational stories that come from the game of football. I just believe football teaches us so much. It's the ultimate team sport, and there's just so many things that life lessons that young men can learn to become to become better people. And I got a great one here today, man. This one came from this past weekend. I was, uh, Gridiron Coffee Company was actually a sponsor for the Strength and Leadership Clinic at Georgia Tech, which was led by the head strength coach, Lewis Carella. And if you haven't heard of Lewis Carella, he's had some viral sound bites like on social media and YouTube and things like that. And I began following him a few months ago and I was like, man, this guy, he's on a whole nother level. He is on a whole nother level. And when I heard that this clinic was happening, I was like, I'm going, I mean, I was going to go just as a coach, but it hit me. I was like, you know what? Maybe I can, I can uh, be a part of this. And so I sent him a message and I was like, Hey, I would love to be able to provide the coffee for this clinic. And he was all for it. And he was like, you know what? We're going to set you up a table. So, and we're going to make you a sponsor. So I was an official sponsor of the event. It was pretty awesome. I met so many great people. I mean, I had a table next to Sorenex. I mean, I was just, I was blown away. Met a lot of great coaches and heard a lot of great speakers. Like Inky Johnson was there the head strength coach of the Dallas Cowboys, Indiana, Arizona. I mean, it was just, it was awesome. There was so much value. I'm still like decompressing from it and just kind of processing everything that, that, uh, that happened. I mean, it was, it was so cool. It was just awesome. So I'm going to actually have a YouTube video that will come out that will kind of just kind of show some glimpses and highlights of the, of the, um, day. And I also recorded um, some of the speakers. And I'm going to start you out with Lewis Corella's speech. It was called More Than a Coach. And I'm just going to give you some sound bites that were, uh, I found that were really impactful and that could bring you a lot of value. So let's get to it, man. You're going to enjoy this one. This is so good. Um, I got, like I said, it's going to be a three part series. So we're going to start kick you off with Lewis Corella and let's get to it. <laughs> signed up and I know that the people in this room didn't either if I couldn't build a team's culture if I couldn't develop toughness if I couldn't hold people accountable because that's what life's going to do after this if I couldn't give you opportunities to earn respect if I couldn't give you opportunities to lose respect uh, to be passionate and fearless to, to maximize your potential to teach people about discipline and commitment and leadership and being selfless and it's always there if all that stuff was not in our weight room that was capable of happening on a daily basis, I would not love what I do. I, I, I show you guys this because this is my coaching stops. This is where I've been. This is how it all started. I'm not going to read it all to you, but the main reason I show you all these stops is because it really means nothing. At the end of the day, you're going to want to know what I can give you to help you. Sure, it might give me a platform to stand on at first, but after that, you're not going to care where I've been. You're going to care what I want to help you with. You're going to care my intent to get you to where you want to be. So every team I've ever taken over, sure, I've, I've had a resume. I've had whatever award, but it doesn't matter. It matters if I'm here for you and you know that, and i got to build your trust from there. So what do I do? You know, four times in five years, I've had a different head strength job. And that's been challenging, you know? And, and I think it's rare with insight that I can give you because not a lot of people have gone through that. So your approach is everything. If you, if you walk into a new program and you're the new guy, you're the only new guy, well, what's everyone thinking right now? Who is this guy? Does he care about me? How's this going to work? I liked our last guy that we had. Like all these things are rolling through your mind and you better be on point and you better be there for them. It ain't about you. As soon as you show up, if it's about you, 
you're going to get turned shoulder every second. So I've always tried to come into a program and make it exciting, make it different, make it feel like they want to come back. Um, the messages that I try to give, that's probably how I met a lot of you, you know, on social media or whatever it is, but I try to be as honest as I can with the guys I coach. I try to, I try to give them my heart. You know, everything I've been through, look, I made this graphic because I believe in it. I believe every person in this room has a library of things that they've been through. I got benched, I got, I've started, I've been all conference, I've fumbled, I've scored, I've transferred, I've been injured, I've been lied to, I've accomplished goals and I've failed, I've been fired, I've been positive in dark times, I've had sleepless nights, I believed in myself and everyone else stopped. I, 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 I've won, I've lost, I've had fear, regret, loyalty issues, toughness and leadership. It's all in us. Everyone, every one of these people in this room has something like this on their wall every day. You just don't realize it. So if you're not sharing that with the guys you coach, if you're not sharing that with people in your life, it's a waste of the platform that you have. Then you ever thought, just open your heart up. <clears throat> Tell them the mistakes that you made. There hasn't been one workout that these kids have had here or anywhere I've been that I have not done before they arrive at the facility that day. I always do their workout. I always do their run. It's just because... Number one is safety. I want to keep them safe. I want to have their back when, like, look, if I wrote too much, listen to my war music in my office, and I got too excited, and then I feel it, I can change it before they even know it was written. So if I'm sitting on the bottom of a number six, and I see a number six, well, I'm right. I know I am. I, that's a number six. But this kid over here is standing right here, and he's like, no, man, that's a number nine. Like, I, I'm telling you, that's a... Well, if I'm not willing to go over here, if I'm not willing to see it or hear it, He's wrong, because I'm right. But what if you're both right? Then what? So what if what if a kid's late to a lift, and you're not hearing him? Say, no, you're late. You get out of here. Meanwhile, his car broke down. He ran here, left his car, uh, tried to get his workout gear on, and then sprinted to the weight room two minutes late. You're going to kick him out then? You're going to not try to see that nine? I'm telling you, there's there's value in this lesson, because... We, as coaches, can get in a lot of trouble if you're not willing to hear it from the other side. And I think that's such a valuable point for life in general. We want to judge people. We want to judge people. But we don't want to see it from their point of view. Like, I was raised different. You were raised different. But if we don't listen to someone, if we don't hear it from someone else, we're not moving forward. And it's so easy to move forward if you just give it intentional effort. So that's one of my favorite pictures of all time. A one-day contract every day. That's the question everyone's got to come to work with. If I was going to be hired or fired today to save my family, how am I going to give effort? Or do I just think tomorrow's guaranteed? Because a lot of times, we don't appreciate things until we lose it. And that's the honest truth. So please, if I can give you advice, work like you're on a one-day contract, and I guarantee you multi-year will be in your future. It's going to come. And you know what? It's going to knock. Guess what? You're going to be putting your shoes on still like, I I'm coming, who, I'm coming, hold on, hold on, hold on, I'll, I'll be there, you open the door, it's gone, right, so the people that work while they wait, the people that do things and not complain, the people that have a passion no matter what their role is right now, those are the people, when it comes knocking, that door's already open, it doesn't even have a chance, it comes right in. Because guess what? When you're working, when you don't have your way, and you do go in, you're never coming back out. And that's what I feel in my heart. Guys wait, man. They complain. They, they say things that they shouldn't say. They, they leave when everyone else leaves, right? But they want more than everyone has. You can't do that, man. You can't do it. you got to work. Through a lot of stuff. And I believed I should have been playing more, right? But I kept getting hurt. Whatever, I got hurt, I got hurt. My third year, I thought I was really going to be a lot of things. Kick returner, punt returner, starting running back, playing quarterback. Because that's what the head coach told me. Right, so the next week, that wasn't the case. I barely played. That whole season, I was healthy as ever. I barely played. And that season hurt the most out of any season I was hurt. Right, so what do I do? I get mad. I get angry. I get frustrated, just like everyone does. But if I don't go back to this question, I don't handle it right. What would I tell my future son if I was going to get through a tough time? Like, if I'm going to take a shortcut and I'm going to try to give that little guy advice one day, I'm a hypocrite. 
right? If, I, if I'm not going to give in in a tough time, if I'm just going to fold, if I'm not going to believe in myself because other people don't believe in me, how am I going to ever tell him to believe in himself one day? Like, what's, that's not real. You can't give someone what you don't have. Or you can't give someone what you haven't lived. So if I don't live it right, I can't give it. So that's, that's the whole thing. Daughters, sons, everything that you go through sometimes, guys, it might not be for right now. It might be for later to help someone else. So there's a bigger purpose in everything. You just got to see it sometimes. And that's why I bring this back to light, because some of you are going through stuff right now. There's no doubt in my mind you're going through stuff. But it might not be for right now for you to handle. It might be to give someone advice later that you can really help. I've had limited people call my phone when I really needed them to call me. I had people that were very close to me that really did help me. And I will never forget it. So you see like the success come your way and all the stuff that you had to overcome to even make that possible. But then once you got over that obstacle, people want to reach out to you and help you then and say nice things then. But then when you were down, they were nowhere to be found. So with, look, you keep your distance when I'm down, double it when I succeed. That's the truth. And, and that, I mean that wholeheartedly. And that's for you too. Keep the fakeness out of your life. Just because you're doing well, I'm sure people would love to be a part of that. I'm sure people would love to say they knew you or know you. But where did you know me when I was down? Did you know me when you didn't pick up my call? Did you know me when I really needed you when my wife was pregnant in the kitchen and we knew we were going to have health insurance? Like, that stuff to me, it, don't burn a bridge and then try, try to come back around and put water on it. Like, that, that, it blows my mind that people think they can get away with that. So I will, uh, I will never be that person and I will always text people when they're down. So, look, a lot of things happen in life where you might be the underdog. You might be down, man. You might, the odds are way against you. But if you create doubt in someone's mind and give them a fight that they weren't looking for, you got a great chance because that's what Georgia Tech is, right? We got, look, on paper right now, we got a tough schedule. We do. We always do. But if we can create doubt early on and come out of the gates blazing, you just never know, man. You never know. You create doubt in someone's mind and you got a lot to fight for, I think you got a great chance. And that's no matter what you're in, no matter what line of work. I think intelligence creates followers. I think if you're very smart at what you do, people are going to follow you. I always say this to the guys. If you run a 4-4-40, but your football IQ is equivalent to a 5 flat, you don't matter. It doesn't matter. That's like if you can be as strong and as tough as possible, but if you can't be accountable when you're fatigued, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. So I think a confused player will always be a slow player, no matter how fast he is. And that's just true to me. I, I really think if you want to get faster, get in your playbook. Because some of the guys that aren't the most impressive 40 runners are the fastest on the field because they're the most confident because they know the scheme, because they know everything going on. And they know everyone else's role too. Any sport, anything. If you were in school and you didn't study for your test, right, but your buddy studied all night and he feels very good about it, it's going to be pretty tough not to do this. Right? You... <laughs> It's just, it's normal. The world doesn't matter. If a kid doesn't touch the line and go back, does it matter? If all this stuff, guys, you can see it all in the warm-up. And if you don't, you're not watching. Right? So I can always tell when a kid's going to have a great practice. He's dialed in, man. He's doing everything right. He's finishing hard. And guess what? He has a great practice because of that warm-up. Right? His hand's behind the line. He's sprinting. He's decelerating. He's stopping. He's going. It's all there for you. Every answer that you're looking for is right there. Just watch a little more. Now, the kid that doesn't clap, probably the kid that misses class. The kid that doesn't touch the line is probably the kid that's going to get you beat on third and four. The kid that doesn't finish through the line when you need the whole team to finish through the line, probably not going to pay attention to meetings. It all correlates, but it's all there. It's just up to you to see it. So the same guys. Same guys do that warm-up wrong. The same guys that mess everything else up. So basically, when you say, can you do our warm-up correctly, you can say, uh, can I trust you to do our warm-up right? Or can I trust you to play for our team? Same thing. <clears throat> Same thing. Why? Why is it so hard in there? Because that's exactly what's waiting for you outside. That is exactly what's coming your way in life. If I can't get you through fear and anxiety and nervousness and overcome it and turn that into confidence, I don't serve you correctly. 
I don't get you ready for anything. I'm just talk. I'm just guy that wants to say things. But that's real stuff, man. Like, you're gonna lose a loved one one day. Your faith's gonna be truly tested. You're not gonna be told you're good enough one day. You're not gonna have a job at some point. What are you gonna do then? Be resilient. Believe. Call people because you are a great person and make good connections. Like, there's a lot of stuff that goes with these hard workouts that I love that translates directly to this kid's life forever. That's why we do the hard workouts. If a player on your team is taking shortcuts all the time and you never say anything, you don't want to say something hurtful to be helpful right now. Your whole team's going to be hurt at the end of the season. So why not say it right now? Like, that's the point, man. Truth is a dodge by everyone. Everyone's scared to give it. Everyone's afraid to take it. But it can change you so fast if you just accept it. If you're doing everything you can, you're giving it all your heart, and you know you can't do anything more, and you've been lied to, and it just doesn't make sense anymore, then you leave. That makes sense. Hell, I did that in college. But it wasn't until after three years of misery, of fighting through stuff, of bouncing back, of adversity after adversity after adversity, and then I said, well, hey, I'm quitting if I stay. I'm quitting on myself if I stay here. And it gets to that point, you gotta go. But don't just bail the second things get tough. And don't get mad at anything else but your own discipline and work ethic. So question that first. You, you think courage is standing up to the enemy? You think courage is like being bold against someone that challenge? That's normal. You're supposed to do that. Like anyone can bow up if someone comes at them. Can you say no to your friends when they want to get in a car that they shouldn't get in? Can you, are you brave enough to say no to your friends that want to take you somewhere you shouldn't go? I don't know. I don't know. Not a lot of people are these days. That's one of the best points I can give you because it can save your life. Show me the car facts, right? These cars, look, that car looks great. I'm going to buy it, but show me the car facts. All right, you see a laundry list of uh, car facts and all that stuff. Wrong with the car. You're not buying that car. You're going to get the one with least issues. Same thing when the NFL scouts come. Same thing. Hey, this kid got a lot of talent, man. But how's his character? Do kids like him? Is he a good per like, like, does he watch film? Like, is he? Because if he's got a lot of Carfax on his sheet, he, they're going with the guy from Clemson, North Carolina. It doesn't matter. You got more DNs everywhere. All right? So you gotta, you gotta keep your character in check. You gotta be good, man, with all the other stuff beyond time. He's like, all right, I'm gonna help this butterfly. So he takes some scissors, clips the edge of the cocoon. The butterfly gets out. He keeps crawling around. He's waiting for him to fly. Butterfly never flies. Why? Well, the guy didn't know the rule. The guy didn't know the rule. For that butterfly to fly, it had to squeeze out of the cocoon and fight on his own to force fluid into his wings so that butterfly would fly forever. But without that struggle, without that, without that fight through that cocoon, it never would have happened. So that did not happen, and that butterfly never flew. So sometimes what I'm saying is you think you're going to need all this help in life. Man, I need help. I need help. You gotta fight your own fight. You have to fight your own fight sometimes. And, and look, I understand you gotta get help sometimes, but you have to fight your own fight more times than not or you never fly. Man, how good was that? Coach Corella, I just wanna go ahead and say thank you. If you hear this, thank you, you're awesome. And if you've made it this far into the podcast, thank you, please subscribe. Please share it, and if you haven't, go to gridironcoffeecompany.com. Use code GAMEDAY10 and save yourself 10% on your next coffee purchase. All right, guys. Peace out.